meiosis mechanism. In this video, we're going to go through the principles of meiosis. We're going to talk about what exactly meiosis is and why it's necessary. And then we're going to go through the exact steps for meiosis and how you're supposed to draw it on exams to maximize your marks. So what is meiosis? Meiosis is the process of forming uh, four haploid gametes from one diploid cell. Now let's just talk about what it means to be diploid and what it means to be haploid. We all know that we have chromosomes, right? These are sequences of DNA in our eukaryotic nuclei. And we also know that there are differences in chromosomes, right? So for example, chromosome 7 can have many different varieties with slightly different gene versions of them, right? So chromosome 7 contains the same genes in the same order, but you can have different alleles of every gene, right? Which is why the same chromosome might have different versions or different alleles in different people. And we also said that every person, right? Every diploid cell is one which contains two versions of every chromosome. And we call these homologous pairs. So a homologous pair is where we have two chromosomes that have the same genes in the same order, but different alleles of those genes. And then a diploid cell is where we have two of a chromosome type, right? So we have one which we got from our mom and one which we got from our dad. So these are homologous chromosomes. Meiosis is then the ability or the, the process of forming reproductive gametes. So these are cells that can join with other gametes to form new organisms. In humans, we have the sperm and the ovum, which can come together from two different individuals to form a new organism, right, or an embryo. So meiosis is the process of taking a diploid cell and then forming what we call haploid gametes. Now, just to remember what a haploid means, haploid is just where you have one type of chromosome, right? So you don't have a homologous pair anymore, you just have one of every chromosome. So why is it necessary to form haploid gametes? Well, if we want to combine two gametes together in order to form a normal new cell, right? Or a new organism, we need to eventually end up with a diploid cell, right? Because that's how many versions of chromosomes humans have. Therefore, we need to make haploid cells because if we want two things to come together to make two, then it's one plus one, right? That should make sense. So we only have one half of the genetic material, so when they come together, they make a whole. And in the process of forming these gametes, we take one diploid cell and actually form four diploid cells. So that's kind of the overview of what meiosis is. It's a process of halving the chromosome number and forming four of these haploid gametes. So before we go into the actual mechanisms of, of, of meiosis, I just want to mention the fact that before meiosis begins, we have to replicate our DNA, right? Because if you remember, if we have two chromosomes, right? Two homologous chromosomes for every, like we have 23 chromosomes, therefore 46 in total. We eventually want to make four haploid cells, right? So one cell has to turn into four. But if we only have two versions of every chromosome in a normal cell, we can't really make four haploid cells unless we replicate the genetic material, right? Because this way, there is four of every chromosome, and therefore we can make four haploid cells by just giving one to each. So before DNA is replicated, we have before we do meiosis, DNA is replicated in interphase, right? So in, in the S phase of interphase. All right, let's get into the exact mechanism of prokaryotes. So the structure is going to be slightly different to our other videos because we're just going to show you how to draw the meiosis steps. For this example, we're going to assume that our diploid number is four, okay? Now what we mean by diploid number is how many chromosomes there are in a normal eukaryotic cell. So humans actually have a diploid number of 46, right? Because they have 23 pairs of two. But for the simplicity of drawing this diagram, we're just going to assume that the chromosome only has two, and it therefore has two of every pair, hence four chromosomes in total. So let's draw out the cell. 
Okay, so the first stage of meiosis is a stage which we call prophase 1. And in this stage, there are four things that happen. The first thing is that DNA is going to condense. What we mean by condensation is that it wraps itself around histones. And this makes the DNA easier to transport, which is when we can see these chrom chromosomes for the first time. We then also have this process of crossing over happening. Now, if you take HL, you will know crossing over in more detail. But if you're an SL, we're just going to explain crossing over like this. The two chromosomes, chromosome 7 from your mom and chromosome 7 from your dad, are going to align next to each other. And what they're going to do is that they're going to exchange the genetic material between their, their chromatids so that the new chromosomes that form have a mixture of the dads and the moms. Okay, so the chromosomes will look something like this now. Okay, so you can see that what we've done is that we've mixed together the homologous chromosomes so that we create genetic variation. More on that in the next video. So prophase has DNA condensation crossing over, and then we also have this breakdown of the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. Now this is so that the chromosomes are able to move around in the cell. And then we also have the formation of spindle fibers. Now if you remember from mitosis, spindle fibers have the function of pulling chromosomes apart. So they're going to start to form in prophase one. What's then going to happen in metaphase one? In metaphase one, the nuclear envelope will now have been broken down, right? So we can remove the nucleus. And now the homologous chromosomes are going to align themselves along the equator. So chromosome 7 from your mom and chromosome 7 from your dad are going to align. And chromosome 3 and chromosome 3 are going to align on the equator as well. So they're going to align in their homologous pairs, okay? The reason why they do this is, is because the spindle fibers have attached to the centromere that is connecting the two sister chromatids together. So the sister chromatids are going to be aligned along the middle of the equator because the spindle fibers have attached to them. Okay, so this is how you would draw that on a diagram. What's going to happen in anaphase then? Well, anaphase is the process of separating the homologous chromosome pairs. Right? So chromosome 7 from mom and chromosome 7 from dad are now going to move to the opposite poles of the cell because the spindle fibers will pull them apart. So the homologous chromosome pairs, and that's really important, it's the homologous pairs are split up by the contraction of the spindle fibers. Okay, So we're not separating sister chromatids like we did in mitosis. We're separating homologous pairs. So chromosome 7 from what your mom and chromosome seven from your dad are going to move to opposite sides of the cell, but the sister chromatids will still stay intact. Okay, now what is going to happen in telophase? In telophase, there are three things that will happen. Now, the chromosomes will have reached the poles of the cell, right? They're going to be in opposite parts of the cell. So chromosome seven from your mom and chromosome seven from your dad are now gonna be in opposite parts of the cell. Also, what's gonna happen is that the nuclear membrane will start to reform around these separated homologous pairs and the spindle fibers are going to start to break down, right? So we're just gonna draw those as little dots on the end. We're also going to have a period of cell elongation. Now this is to prepare for cytokinesis, to prepare for we'll say division, right? So because we're kind of trying to divide the cell, we need the cell to get longer. So the nuclear membrane will reform, the spindle fibers will break down, and the cell will elongate. In cytokinesis then, this cell is going to split into two separate cells. We are separating the cytoplasm, right? And the DNA is now going to be in its homologous pairs, surrounded by a new nucleus, right? And there's going to be two of them. So now what we've done is that we've separated genetic materials. Now, in fact, this cell is already a haploid cell because there's only one type of genetic material, only one type of genetic 
material. So people sometimes get confused by this. They'll think, oh, well now we've split it. So there's 46 chromosomes in here, right? Because if you were to, since there's 23 pairs and there's two sister chromatids in every, in every one, there's now gonna be 46. But remember that these are now identical. So there's still only one type of genetic material. So the cell is already haploid. It's not diploid anymore. What will happen in prophase two then? Well, what's gonna happen is the exact same things that happened in prophase one, except that we don't have crossing over happening. Our spindle fibers will reform, our nuclear envelope will start to break down, and our DNA is going to condense again because we'd had some slight DNA decondensation in telophase in the previous section. Now, obviously, because there are two of these cells, we're going to need to draw two of them, if that's what we're asked to do. So there's going to be two of these cells that are now dividing. What will happen next? Well, we're gonna have metaphase two, right? And metaphase is all about cell alignment along the equator. So let's draw out the cell. So what's happening in metaphase two? Well, now the spindle fibers are again going to attach to the chromosome, specifically at the centromere, and they're gonna pull them to the equator, to the middle of the cell, right? Just as they did before. But this time, because we only have one of every, every chromosome, right? Chromosome seven, there's only one of them. It's just that there's, it's replicated. And they're going to align in a single file. So not in the pairs like they did in metaphase one. So the sister chromatids will line up along the equator. What's gonna happen in anaphase two then? Well, anaphase is all about splitting things apart, right? So what's gonna happen is that the spindle fibers are going to contract the same proteins, right? And they're going to rip the sister chromatids from each other. And so this will mean that we've now created a separation of all those four chromosomes that we had in the beginning, right? We had two chromosomes for every number, and then we replicated it to make four. And now we have split all four of those chromosomes apart. So these sister chromatids are split into separate parts of the cell, and we call that chromosomes, right? We call them chromosomes now. We then need to do telophase, of course, again. So what's gonna happen? The cells will elongate, right? They're going to get longer. Their nuclear membrane will reform and the spindle fibers will start to break down. The final step that we then need to do is that we need to split these two new haploid cells apart, right? So we're going to form four cells that all have one of every chromosome, hence they are haploid. And now what we're left with, four haploid cells that will eventually then either turn into a sperm cell or an egg cell. I hope that made sense. This video, we went through the mechanism of meiosis, why it's important, as well as all the different steps that you need to outline if you're asked about a question on meiosis. You actually don't have to draw all the steps in meiosis if you're asked about a question, but it's a really good way to show understanding. So I do recommend it.